welcome to your practice. My name's Cole, and welcome to my yard. Um, I'm at my new place in Australia, and the sun's going down. It's been a beautiful day. This is a pizza oven, by the way. I know I'll get questions about that with a pizza oven. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm just kind of wanting to, I've been kind of a busy day, and I'm wanting to move my body, but softly and gently. So I'm just gonna do what feels good in my body. They're just suggestions. So take what works, leave the rest, and let's, let's have a little session here. So a little sunset session. Let's start in child's pose, yeah? So balasana, child's pose. The knees can be together, or you can bring the knees wide and bring the hips to the heels. Options for the arms, you can reach the arms out forward, bring the forehead down to the ground, or maybe you reach the arms around. See what it feels like to grab the heels or just leave the palms up. So you can try both of those options and see which one feels better. Maybe it changes um, day to day. I kind of feel like when I wrap my arms around, it feels a little bit more grounding. And the arms out is a little bit more energizing, but that's just me. Explore for you. And begin to notice the breath in the body. Notice it expanding on an inhale. And release out the mouth or out the nose. Just anchoring in to this moment, into your body, maybe noticing points of contact on the ground where the forehead rests, where the backs of the hands or the palms touch the earth, just all the points of contact right here, just anchoring in. And gently tracing the breath in and out of the body. Then bring your awareness to the back of the heart. So in between the shoulder blades, this space, and see if you can breathe into that space. So that when you inhale, maybe the shoulder blades separate just slightly because you're puffing up the back of the heart. And if your arms aren't extended out front yet, go ahead and glide them out front, keeping your awareness on the back of the heart. And we're gonna roll up into tabletop, but we're gonna lead with the back of the heart as if you had a string pulling from that place and it was pulling you up. So you can begin to tuck the chin to the chest, push down through your shins, and as if you were being guided up from the back of the heart, bring the shoulders over the wrists and drop the belly down, cow pose. Open the throat, gaze up, and then exhale, push down into the hands as the chin, the tailbone tucks, and then push into the hands, hips back to heels, child's pose, forehead touches the ground. Inhale, chin to chest, begin to roll up, let yourself be guided up. Shoulders come over wrists, drop the belly, cow pose, open up. And then exhale, push into the hands as you guide back, child's pose. A couple more rounds like this with your own breath. Next time, let's come up into tabletop. And we'll stay right here for a moment, spreading the hands wide. Really anchor in through the fingers and the knuckles. So we're not putting so much weight into the wrists. We can spread out that, that work. 
Inhale, the right arm reaches out, the left arm reaches out, the left leg reaches out. So inhale here, and then exhale, bring it down, child's pose. And we'll flow like this. Inhale, rise up. This time, left arm reaches, right leg reaches, and exhale, child's pose. Again, inhale, come up. Maybe you're still rounding up. Reach right arm, left leg, and exhale down. And other side, inhale, left arm. Once more, each side with your own breath. And once more, we'll add on here, coming up right side. You can stay right here reaching in opposite directions or maybe bend the back leg and reach for the foot. So options here, you can pull the heel towards, uh, towards the booty and you'll get like a, probably a quad stretch here. Or you can also kick into the hand. And if you're kicking into the hand, then lengthen the tailbone down and engage the core so that you're protecting your low back. And slowly release child's pose. Do the same on the other side. So inhale, come up, left arm reaches, right leg reaches, you can stay here. Maybe you bend and grab the foot, so either way, either taking more of a quad stretch, or you can kick into the hand and get a little expansion. And child's pose, three rounds of breath here. Chin to chest, push down into the shin, slowly roll up, tuck the toes, push back, downward facing dog. Pedal out, take the hands really wide and the feet really wide, so both to the edges of the mat, and it's a short, wide, down dog. Continue to find some movement here. You can even walk the hands back even more. Right arm is gonna go to the left leg. You can come to the calf, maybe to the heel. And then see if you can tuck back the left hip crease and then gaze under the left armpit. Knees can be bent. And just breathe here, noticing where you feel the sensation. It'll be a little bit different for everyone. And slowly release and we'll switch sides. So unwind and then left hand towards the right foot leg. May be helpful to bend the opposite leg so you can twist a bit more, but just see what it's like in your body. And release, gaze forward and walk the feet up to the top of the mat to the outside. And we'll take them a loss in a squat. So toes out, heels in, and you can come down as much as you'd like. Maybe the hips, maybe the elbows come to the knees and you kind of take a squat here. Or maybe you come all the way down, elbows inside the knees. So keep moving here, finding a little bit of movement. And we're gonna open up with a twist. So right hand comes down. Return this way. Right hand comes down. So it can come down kind of in front of the right foot. You can also reach out to the side, push shoulder into the knee, knee back into the shoulder. So regardless of where you are, we're gonna have that equal opposition. And then open up with the left arm. And exhale, close off. We'll do that on the other side. So left tricep, left knee connect and use that to help you peel open. And release, let's do that once more on each side. Again, this is really important, this spot here. This helps you twist. So push in and allow that to help you twist open and maybe even reach behind you. Up and over, that feels so good in my back. Left hand plants and then right arm open. So maybe you go up and maybe you go back. So if you wanna twist more, then really push left 
tricep into the leg. That'll help you twist. And then release. Bring the hips up. Forward fold, really bent knee forward fold. Get a shake going on. I got some traction. If you want to get some traction in the back, you can interlace the hands behind the neck. Really helped me. And then lean a little bit more into the toes and the heels. And let's release. Let's step back with the left foot. Bring the left knee down. And begin to open up the heart. Let's take the hands towards the right knee or on top of the right knee. So maybe you're flexing, you can come all the way down, but we want to find some engagement here. So pull the left knee and the right um, foot towards one another. Another way you might have heard it, like scissoring the thighs, which sounds like, you know, you have scissors. You pull back on one side, forward on the other. Whichever one works for you. Lengthen the tailbone down and then roll the heart open. Hands can also go up if you'd like to lift the hands from here. Steady breath. One more inhale. And exhale, hands plant down. They can also find blocks. We're gonna take half splits so the front leg can straighten. I like to move my foot up a little bit. I've got really long limbs. Roll the shoulders back, pull the heart forward as if you were gonna bring it towards the toes. It's not going to go there, but it's going in that direction. So heart moves forward as the shoulders move back. And then also pull back at the right hip crease. If you want a little bit more, then you can turn the right toes out. So you can stay right here. You can also plant the left hand and we can take a twist here. If you'd like to twist open towards the right. Maybe some big arm circles here. And slowly plant both hands. Shift forward. One more inhale, lift. Maybe the arms go up here. And exhale, plant the hands. Just gentle, just with breath. And let's gaze. tuck the back toes. Left foot meets the right, forward fold. Let's switch sides. The right foot steps back. Knee plants. And maybe before we lift up here, let's go ahead and pull back on the left hip crease. Energize the back knee and the front heel towards each other. You feel that? And then from this place of stability, then lift up. Maybe the hands come to the knees. If this hurts the knees, you can also lift the knee. You can also take um, a cushion or something underneath the knee. Arms are welcome to go up, but we're pulling the heart center forward and open, rolling the shoulders back. One more inhale. Exhale, plant the hands and then shift the hips back. I always like to bring my heel up a little bit and you can play with having the back toes tucked or not tucked. It doesn't really matter. It sh sits a little bit different on the kneecap. So it's kind of individual. Flex the toes, pull back on the left hip crease. Then roll the shoulders back as the heart moves forward. This is a great place for blocks. I actually prefer to have blocks here. I just don't have them out here with me. Just steady breath, breathe into sensation. If you'd like to plant the right hand and take this twist and you can just peel the left arm up. Watch this right shoulder, often it wants to follow you over. So roll it back. Maybe turn the left toes out. You're welcome to add some arms in. Square off, plant the hands, shift forward. One round of breath, open the heart, whether the hands come to the knees or the arms go up. Your choice, tuck the back toes. We're actually gonna step back 
Downward facing dog. Take a pedal and a shift. And then bring the knees down. We're gonna have the hips over the knees, puppy pose. So extend the arms long and bring the heart down. So some options here. You can bring the chin down and gaze forward. You can place the forehead down like we did in child's pose. So a couple different options there. Maybe you come onto the fingertips and lift the arms up. If you're doing this variation, then pull the shoulders back. You can also take prayer pose and bring them over the head. This lets the chest kind of drop in a bit more and a little bit of a tricep stretch. So your choice. Three more rounds of breath here. And then slowly come out. And you can sink the hips towards the heels and then round yourself up to sitting on the heels. Hmm. Just breathing 360 degrees, really filling up in all directions. Beautiful. All right. One last pose here. Go ahead and bring the arms back out and we'll come into Sphinx. Two more poses. Bring the belly down, untuck the toes. Roll the shoulders back and open the heart as if you could shimmy, snake the chest forward. You can drag the hands and elbows back towards the hips as the heart comes forward. And then press the tailbone, the pubic bone down into the ground. This should give you some more space in the low back. Mm. All right, let's bring the left hand parallel with the top of the mat and then bend the right foot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reach the right hand back for the right foot, yeah? You can also use a strap here. You just make a loop and loop it. I'm just gonna get a quad stretch here so you can pull the foot back. You can grab for the inside or the outside of the foot. You may even take it into the elbow. Continuing to push the pubic bone down, especially if you, if you have low back pain. So I get little tweaks in my low back. So I have to be really cognizant and aware. And I can still do the things, but it just requires that I'm aware, which is, which is good. It makes me present. So pressing down into, rooting down into the um, pubic bone. It feels really great. It gives me a lot better stretch in the quad as well. I can see a kookaburro. If you don't know what a kookaburro is, I suggest that you Google it and what they sound like. You might get a sound of them later. They laugh, they cackle. They also look like Muppet babies, like Jim Henson drew the birds. Oh, feels good. You can also come down if that, I can notice my shoulders dropping, so you can also just come down to uh, the belly. This actually feels more relaxing. Up to you. Slowly releasing and let's switch sides, but let's come back into Sphinx pose to begin. Again, snaking the spine forward. And then maybe lengthening the toes out like as if you were gonna, like someone was pulling your feet back, getting a little bit more length right there. Let's switch sides. So the right arm comes forward. Maybe you start up and then move down. Grabbing for the inside or the outside of the foot. 
I'm just seeing where you want to go. Maybe looping a strap around. And the more you root the pubic bone down, lengthen the tailbone down, you'll get more of a stretch in the quads too. Release your jaw, so move the teeth away from one another. Common to clench the jaw when we feel some sensation. Maybe you come down. And slowly release. I'm going to just shake out the hips here. Beautiful. Plant the hands. Push back and let's come back into a seat. You're welcome to take a Shavasana here as well. Just wanted just to take a few rounds of breath, so you can take whichever feels feels better. <sighs> Someone asked me the other day of why I switch or why I don't always do shavasana at the end. Is that sometimes I like to um, to meet myself here, so we can meet ourselves in different ways. We don't always have to end with a shavasana, especially in a shorter sequence, or depending on um, what we're wanting to do afterwards or just how you're feeling on a day-to-day. -day. We can always, always have options. And important to note as well that, you know, traditionally yoga is performed and was performed in order for the body to be prepared to meditate so that we're more open and we have more space and more mental clarity. So maybe when you sit in a meditation after a bit of asana, which is what the postures are called, and then you notice that your energy is a bit more calm to sit. So if you're sitting, let's just notice that. We'll take about five, six rounds of breath in silence and just notice how your energy has shifted from the beginning. Maybe staying close to the breath, tracing the breath in and out, just observing. And bring your hands to heart center wherever you are. And just thank yourself for showing up for you. Remembering that it doesn't matter the amount of time or how much vigor the practice had or anything like that. It's just about carving out space to, to meet ourselves and to check in and to greet ourselves and create a relationship. So you're doing it. It's a beautiful practice. We're lucky. Grateful to be on this journey with you. Bring the thumbs to the third eye, seat of your inner wisdom, right in between your eyebrows. And let's bow forward and say, Namaste. Hmm. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed this gentle practice. I think it felt delicious in my body, so I hope that it resonated in yours as well. And I look forward to, I'm going to start filming some more outside around here at this time and maybe really early in the morning too because I have wallabies, which are like little kangaroos and they come up really close to the house and uh, right now we have some with joeys, which are their babies that they're in their pouch. So if I do this enough, we'll have one jump in the background. So stick with me <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully we'll get some wallabies. So. Thanks for joining me. If you want to uh, practice longer classes, check out my membership site. Um, I also have trainings 
and retreats and stuff you can find on my website, coldchanceyoga.com. So I'll see you next time. Ciao.